Welcome to another video guys, 770 subscribers recently, it's nice to see that there's interest in this type of content, so I'll keep making it. I'm not making any money of this channel, it would take a lot more views and subscribers to, for Google to even give me a couple of dollars, but I did get some commission from the Move Shoot Move uh, video that was sponsored recently, so thank you to everyone who supported me. Also this guy Ben, he insisted to gift me $20 for the EQ platform plans that I provided. I said it's fine, but he insisted, so <laughs> thank you as well, mate. What did I do with all that money? It was not much, but it was just enough to get a good zoom that I feel is the best zoom that I found on the market that hits that ideal price uh, versus value category. I did have also the Hyperion zoom and a cheaper SV Boni zoom. I'm going to cover all of that in this video. As I already sold the Hyperion zoom, here you can see a composite of how these three compare to each other. Before we go any further, let's discuss what are actually zooms and why they are so great. In my personal opinion, anybody and everybody who has any kind of telescope should have a zoom eyepiece. Especially given they are so fun and so versatile and at the end of the day the cheapest ones are like $49. For that kind of money, you really could, cannot afford not having a zoom in your collection. To be honest, most of the time I'm using my high-end eyepieces. The zoom probably I lose, use it like for 10% of my viewing, but that 10% is filled with fun. It's nice to have and sometimes it's even really, very, really valuable and it cannot be replaced by anything else. Let's have a look at how a zoom works. As you can see, we can simply zoom out. And if we simply just turn the knob around, we are going to be able to zoom in. Amazing, isn't it? <laughs> so what are the downsides of a zoom? The downsides of a zoom is the field of view. At the lowest setting, most of these zooms will have a very low field of view, like 40 degrees. At the highest setting, depending on the price of the zoom, they are going to have something like 52, 60 or 68. Another disadvantage of a zoom, the edges will not be very well corrected in a fast telescope like an f5 or something like that. A couple of other news, I got this nice bag, these are all the eyepieces that I have now, everything else has been sold and my new rule is if I'm ever going to buy an eyepiece it has to fit in this bag, if it's already busy one has to go away. <laughs> Let's get to it, first I will start with a Hyperion zoom. Spoiler alert, you don't see it anywhere, it was already sold like a month ago. I did not like it enough. It's a nice zoom, but I did not like it enough. Let's check it out. Next we have the famous Blader Hyperion zoom. Very famous, lots of discussions online, so I had to get my hands on one, bought it used, and I'm selling it used because I'm not happy. Spoiler alert, I'm not happy. <laughs> Let's see why. The packaging is really first class. I really like the packaging. Really nice box. You unpack it. You get this really nice bag that you can put on your belt. You can wear it with you anywhere you go. It has a ton of accessories, all kinds of rubbers, rings. Everything that you see here is included. Unpack it. Really nice. Feels quite, quite premium. What I really like is this adjustable eye cap, you can put the distance just as you want because the eye relief with the changing of focal length changes, so very important. At the bottom you have an adapter for a 2 inch focuser, so you don't have to use any adapters to take it, you put it into a 2 inch focuser, it will fit just nicely, perfect, because I like using my eyepieces in 2 inch mode. If you don't have a 2 inch focuser, all you have to do is unscrew this one and it exposes a 1.25 inch adapter, put it into a 2 inch adapter and again you're ready to go. As I said, 
Ethereum, the Bada Planetarium, they've really thought about making your life easy when it comes down to the physical packaging, to the physical functions. It feels really nice turning it around, it has this click stop action, it goes from 8 until 24. The field of view at 8 is 67, 68 degrees, at 24 is basically a puzzle around 50, so nothing to write home about. To be honest, the only focal length that I found that useful was 16, 12 and 8. Now why I'm selling it? Why I'm not keeping it? Two reasons. One is the price. For $275, that's a lot of money for not enough optical performance. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter how cute it is, how nicely it feels, how great the materials are. You need optical performance. I compared it to this Max Vision 11mm fixed eyepiece. This one was sharp all the way until the edges. This one only like 50 degrees. The last 20 degrees really messed up full of astigmatism. It was not common. Even without comma corrector, the Max Vision was clean. This one was messy. It shouldn't be happening in a $275 eyepiece. The good news, it cost me $190. I'm selling it for 170, so I lost a little bit money on it. But this is for f5. Maybe if your telescope is f10, f8, you will not have problems with the edges. So keep in mind, I'm reviewing this one when used in a 12 inch f5. On this schematic, you can see how the Hyperion zoom looks inside. I've actually opened it and verified that it has these lenses which go up and down. Another big reason is SV Boney. SV Boney has excellent zooms for a lot less money. The one that I will have a look at next is the 721 which costs like $40. And I'm getting the new one in a couple of weeks. The improved zoom from SV Boney, which is basically a copy of the Bader Hyperion, only for a fraction of the price. It cost me $68. Goodbye Hyperion Zoom, it was nice to get my hands on you finally, but you are going away to a better home. So that was the famous Hyperion Zoom, now let's check out the ones that I will actually recommend and the ones that you can actually keep and for me I'm keeping one of them myself. First one is the SV Boney SV135, we're gonna check it out. Second one is SV191, again from SV Boney, a better improved version, somewhere in the middle between this one and the Hyperion Zoom. Only the price of this one is absolutely amazing. I got it for $68 with some uh, special discount code. SV Boney has not sponsored anything of this video, so I don't care if you buy it or not, but I do recommend it. Now let's check out first the SV135. It's a pretty nice zoom, quite small. The biggest advantage of this one, it's very light. Like really, really light. It fits in most of the cases. Very small, very easy to turn around. It goes from 7mm all the way to 21mm. All around, really, really nice uh, zoom. The edges are not bad. What I do not like about this one, it has a very, very small field of view. At 21, it's just like 38 degrees. And at 7, I measured it, it's the same as a Super Plossal. I know on the box it says something like 57 or whatever, it's not. At the highest and 7 mm, it is only 52 degrees. Too small for my taste, too small. So I needed something bigger. I tried the Hyperion Zoom, but the edges were messy, so I sold that one. I lost $20 on it, but I don't care. I just got rid of it. What I gave a try to next was SV191. Again, thanks to the contributions in this channel, you made this one happen. I mean, to be honest, it's not as if I couldn't afford this one, but as I promised, any kind of dollar I got on this channel from any kind of uh, source, it's going to go into Astro Equipment, even if I don't need it, <laughs> just to make more content. And the Hyperion Zoom, it was one of those cases, 
I was not sure I wanted it, but I said, hell what, I'll buy it and I'll sell it again, but I'll make sure to have it, a video on it. So this one is really, really nice for the money. It goes with nice caps. For some reason, I think it's important to have nice quality rubber caps that fit well, that don't get lost around in the case. What I really like about this one is it goes up and down, this eye guard. This is important that it changes because as we shift the zoom up and down, it actually changes the eye relief. So sometimes you need to go higher, sometimes you need to go lower. The size and the weight is just enough, just enough to fit in my case. Uh, it's a 2 inch uh, barrel, even though it's actually a 1.25 inch zoom. What I don't like about it, it's a little bit tough turning around. You really need to lock it very much into place, into the telescope. Maybe with a little bit more use, more frequent use, it will become easier. And I'm not going to spray it with oil, so <laughs> we're not going to risk that. Would I recommend this one? Wholeheartedly, yes. As I mentioned, I think anybody should have a zoom, and if you're going to have a zoom in your collection, this is the zoom to have. For $67, maybe $74 if you're not able to get some uh, special discount, like for Father's Day that I got. It's unbeatable on price, yeah? Compared to the Hyperion Zoom, which is $275, it's just no comparison. There are some new offers like the Super Zoom from APM and SV Boni for over $300. But no, I, I just don't believe in a Zoom that costs more than $300 for one simple reason. For $300, you can have this absolutely amazing Sky Rover, 30mm and you can top that with something like the Angel Eyes uh, 14 mm or maybe the Max Vision 11 mm 82 degrees these are absolutely amazing eyepieces and most of the time you are not going to be using more than these two uh, focal lengths anyway something to zoom out and something to zoom in there are two more reasons why you should have a zoom one, it makes it really easy to look at the planets. You put something like a 3 or, or even 3 plus uh, 2 Barlow, something like combined 6 Barlow. You just zoom out, you find the planet, you center it in the view, zoom in to the absolute optimal uh, magnification for that given night. On any given night on the planets you will have optimal magnification based on the scene and you enjoy the view. To be honest, most of my viewing of the planets is with a zoom eyepiece because it's just so convenient and so optimum. Another good idea is to use it on DSOs, especially faint ones, to really fine-tune that optimal magnification that shows most details. Or sometimes with low magnification we'll see some details, with higher magnification we'll see another details. So again, having a nice zoom eyepiece in my view, it's really, really a must-have for any serious astronomer. That's all I have for you today. If you like the video, click like, click subscribe. In one of my next videos, I will be covering especially Sky Rover 30mm, one of the best eyepieces that I've ever had in my hands and also the Max Vision 11mm, which is an excellent eyepiece as well. It's actually a weaker version of the Explorer Scientific 11mm. Uh, if you haven't checked it, try to check it out. Amazing eyepiece. That's all, until next time. Clear skies, it's been pretty clear here, so I've been doing finally a lot of observing with the EQ platform. The EQ platform is absolutely amazing. I didn't expect I will use it so much, but I ended up using it every single night since I built it. Great stuff. Check out the videos if you haven't on how to build one yourself. Over and out, bye. This is Astrofields. Talk to you next time.